Hi, this is Matt at Custom Car Grills with a mesh install for a 1998 through 2000 Toyota Tacoma. For this mod, we designed this around an aftermarket imported grill. Installs on OEM grills should be roughly the same. The first order of business is to grab a cutting tool. My go-to is usually an open-ended saw blade like this one. The thin vertical bars are easy to work with with the saw blade and should be removed in no time. When I got to the thicker horizontal bars, they required a little bit more effort. Since the bars are hollow though, it's not a difficult cut to make as long as I take the right angle of approach. The last cut to make is the thin horizontal bar at the bottom. This can be tricky to make, but I'm trying my best to get it near flush with the far left and right grill edge. With all the cuts made, the center portion of the grill should be able to be removed and discarded. Next, I'll sand down the vertical bar remnants and also smooth out the horizontal bar cuts quite a bit. To knock down the majority of excess plastic, I'll get my Dremel and equip it with the sanding drum attachment. While sanding, I like to get this work down very close to the grill edge while not digging deep into it. Any remaining sanding or filling can be done later. The left and right sides are not as straightforward because of their funky shapes. Really the main goal here is to try and get the remaining remnants of the horizontal bars flush with the edge. This is an area where it would be okay to over sand the plastic if need be. The plastic is somewhat wavy so this is a weird section to work on. Here's what my rough sanding looks like. Overall I think it looks pretty good. The top edge is fairly flattened out, and while the sides need a little bit more work, they're a good rough cut for now. To refine this down a little further, I'm going to grab some coarse grit sandpaper. At this point, I'm not removing a whole lot of material, except for a little bit of unevenness left from the cuts. If too much plastic is sanded out, then the edge walls become too thin, especially on the top edge. Next, I'll start working on those big holes left from the cuts. To add a little reinforcement to this area, I'm going to use some mesh, four pieces in total for the four openings. This mesh will give me a great material to dispense the plastic repair onto. To temporarily hold the mesh in place, I'll tape it flush with the back of the grill. The plastic repair material I'm using is the PlyoGrip Plastic Repair Number 3. This easily dispenses directly onto the mesh, but cures quickly, so I'm working fast. I'm trying my best to get this fully filled in and a little bit overfilled. Once the PlyoGrip is on the grill, I'll smooth it out a little bit so there's a more even fill and hopefully less to sand later. After a short time, it looks like it's cured rock hard and ready to sand. The tape that was on the back of the reinforcement mesh can be removed and discarded at this point. I'm going back to the coarse grit sandpaper to get the plyo grip smoothed out some. The plastic repair material sands pretty close to what ABS plastic does. It's not too difficult, but attention to detail is key here. If some of the areas are over sanded, that can be corrected by adding more plyo grip, or we can fix it later in the next step. At this point, I just don't want to have the edges protruding out. Having some of them smooth or slightly inward is good. Next up is the finishing putty, and for this I like using blaze glaze. Generally, I didn't need to dispense a lot of the putty, but I'd rather have too much than too little. Then I'll add a pinch of hardener and it's ready to be mixed up. Just a basic squeegee is a good tool to have for mixing the hardener in. Once it's ready to be dispensed, it's a time sensitive step where I need to work quick. This is a step that will require some real attention to detail because it'll be the final contour of the inside edge of the grill before paint. It's important to be very complete and get the putty in every nick, scratch, crack, or dent. Applying it a little thick can sometimes be a good strategy to ensure full coverage, but that will require more sanding later on. 
Speaking of sanding, it's time to grab some more sandpaper. This time I'll use a medium grit to start for material removal and then work down to a three or 400 grit paper to finish it off. Here's how the grill looked right before paint. The edges are very smooth and even, and to the best of my knowledge, I've repaired all the cuts to the best of my ability. For the paint job, I went with a flat black finish. So far, this looks really good. Just a simple color swap alone made a big difference. The grill that I'm installing is the pre-cut and pre-bent mesh grill piece that we have for sale on our website. Cutouts have been made for the grill brackets and all the right bends are made in the right places. The mesh simply drops onto the back of the grill like so. To temporarily hold the mesh to the grill, I'm going to use some cable ties and foam. It's just simply a matter of looping the tie around the grill and through the mesh and tying them together. I'm only using a few ties for this install and only along the top edge. Also, the ties should be firmly attached so that the mesh contacts the back of the grill, but it's best to not over tighten them. Ties on the sides are typically not needed as long as the bottom corners are making good contact with the mounting tab. With the ties fastened, the tail ends can be trimmed off. Before moving forward, I'm going to bend the mesh on the back inward so that it's making good contact. Then I'm going to use up the remainder of the plyo grip that was left over from the plastic refinishing. This makes for a really good adhesive between the grill and the mesh. Just like before, this stuff cures really quick, so I'm going to work fast to make sure I get coverage all the way around. And the same thing goes with the sides as well. Just run a bead of plyo grip towards the bottom of where the mesh and the grill meet, and that should be enough. For the lower corner areas, the dispensing tube has a hard time reaching. I like to use something to push some of the adhesive towards that area. Once this is cured, the ties and foam can be removed and discarded. Let's flip it around and see how this turned out. Wow, that looks really good. This is a huge transformation from what we started with. While this is a plain installation, additional lettering or emblems can be added to accessorize it if desired. Overall, this installation wasn't too hard, and it's a great mod to modernize the truck. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions about it, feel free to contact me.